Okay. All right. I think we're live. All right. Welcome, everybody. This is um, wow. Village of Marymount Council meeting, April the 26th. We'll call it 632. Sure. On roll call, Mr. Bartlett. Here. Mrs. Graves. Here. Dr. Lewis. Marcy, you're muted. Marcy, you're muted. Sorry. Oh, I'm here. My bad. Ms. Palazzolo. Here. Ms. Rankin. Here. Mr. Stelzer. Here. All right, we have we have a, a special guest with us tonight. We have Melissa Taylor, who's the administrator at Columbia Township. Uh, Melissa, by the way, you're you're muted. Now you're still muted. Huh. Brian, Brian, you're muted as well. Okay, Brian's off. Hit, hit the hit the little red mic down in the corner. Uh, <laughs> All right, we're. Melissa, if you go up to the upper right-hand corner and put your uh, cursor up there, it should say mute or unmute. Yeah, the host. Can, Steve, can you unmute her? Uh, who was it? Who was it's it? Melissa, again, Melissa Taylor. She's on mute. I don't know whether she can get off. I can ask her to unmute, but uh, okay. We... Sometimes it does help if uh, she leaves and rejoins. I've I've noticed. Okay, she's yeah. going to do it. Appears that she's going to do that. Okay. Brian, can you? Are you able to? Okay. I can, I can kick us off if you'd like. That's... Well, l let her try to come back. All right. I think. Uh... Hmm. Well, while we're waiting for that, why don't we go ahead and do the minutes? Um, we can move along. Um, wait. Oh, wait, wait. It looks like we're getting her. It looks like we got her. Yeah. Sorry, it said that it was waiting for the host to admit me. Okay. Can you hear well, me? We yep, can hear we're you. We're glad, that, yep. we're glad that you're here. <laughs> Thanks for your patience for the reset. Oh, no problem. No problem. Um, we know that you're going to give us a little presentation about what is going on over at the old um, Murray Avenue fire station. So if you'd like to proceed and Brian, we're happy to have you here as well. Um, I think Brian's going to kick off and then sure. I'm actually not going to share slides tonight because we have an event this Friday where we're going to share slides. But let me let Brian okay. open and then I'll jump in. Great. Yeah, so first off, um, Brian Lamar, I'm a trustee in Columbia Township. I'm a 15 year resident of Madison Place. I, I really appreciate your all's time tonight. I'm here also on behalf of trustees, uh, David Kubicki, who's the president of their trustees, and Susan Hughes, who most of you probably know. And I don't think I've met most of you, so it's really an honor to meet you. Um, again, thank you for your time. Um, I think also I wanted to say that we really appreciate the partnership that Marymont and Columbia Township have shown on the Murray Path. It's been so much transparency and it's been great to partner with you on that. And so that was one of the reasons why we wanted to come on tonight was that we wanted to also be transparent about what's going on. If you stand at that Murray firehouse, the fire station, you stare in the Marymont. So it certainly affects um, your residents and you guys as well. Um, so we wanted to make sure that both you and your residents have an opportunity to give feedback on it. Um, it's, it was built in 1941, so it's its 70th birthday. We've had a lot of different options with the firehouse. We, and before me, prior to me, there was a restaurant, um, art, other buildings or businesses um, that were options. And we're really excited about what's gonna, what it's actually gonna turn to. We've been getting a lot of feedback from residents about the historical value of it. People have memories of um, Girl Scouts and other events and birthday mm -hmm. parties. And so um, Melissa will share in more detail, but we're really excited about what will hopefully be happening and I'll let Melissa take from there. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Um, so when I was hired a year ago to start as Columbia administrator, uh, the trustees had a lot of projects lined up for me. 
And one of them was the firehouse. As Brian mentioned, the firehouse is 70 plus years old and it has been vacant for a number of years and it is time for its second act. And the firehouse is in a, a really iconic building and it's in a very desirable location because it's in a historic neighborhood. Um, the, the, the type of neighborhood that Oakley is, mm -hmm. is pushing east into Hamilton County. And uh, we, we are seeing Madison Place as the next Oakley. We are seeing that redevelopment happen. So the firehouse also is in the Plainville Business District. And probably our audience tonight will consider most important feature of the location is that it faces Marymont. So we've had, as Brian said, a lot of interest in the firehouse over the last few years, all from private parties who were going to purchase or lease the firehouse for private use. It's the only building that Columbia Township owns that's actually in Columbia Township. Our administrative headquarters and garage is in, Mary, is in uh, Madeira. So the trustees decided the firehouse had been in service for nearly 70 years to the community that we were not going to give it away. We were going to give it back to the community. And so we embarked on what has been not quite a year effort, three pathways. One, what does the market say that this would be a great fit for this building? And number two, what does the community have to say about this location? And then number three, can we afford to do, you know, what can we afford to do to the building? So market for the demand, the community for, let's have a real conversation with the community. Let's just don't come up with some ideas and tell the community about them. Let's let the community be part of the creative process. And so we hired Yard and Company, which is a really hip urban placemaking firm they're headquartered in Covington, Kentucky, but they have a national practice. And so this team has come in and helped guide us down these three paths. And we wanted to share what we learned and, and kind of what we plan on doing. And we wanted to offer an invitation to uh, Marymont uh, leadership and residents tonight. So from the market research, we learned that there's a huge demand for low cost or no cost space for community and neighborhood groups, nonprofits, faith-based, everyone to gather, and not only to gather, but to fundraise uh, in a, a place that has a lot of really modern amenities and a place that is iconic and cool, kind of the trend of what's happening with redevelopment of a lot of historical buildings in our urban centers. And then what we heard from the community is that, our community is that we wanna to get to know our neighbors better. We want our neighborhood to get to know other neighborhoods better. And we actually had people tell us, and, and this is really beautifully said, we want a place where Columbia Township and Marymont residents can mix and become friends. And we thought that really defined what we needed to do with this space. And so from a funding perspective, we thought, well, let's test our idea we think it's a great idea. What we think is a great idea, what the community thinks is a great idea, can we get money for it? So we went out to state, county, and actually federal funders. And to date, we have secured over a half a million dollars for funds toward the firehouse re redevelopment. And then we also put into place with the Porsche expansion that you probably all have seen, um, a tax increment financing district that will cover public improvements. So the reveal, uh, is that we're going to do the firehouse in two phases. It's 10,000 square feet. It looks tiny, but it's actually 10,000 square feet over two levels. So phase one is going to be the top 5,000 square feet. And then phase two will be a future year, the, the lower 5,000 square feet. And so we are going to convert the original um, garage where the fire trucks were um, parked and all the equipment was held into an event venue for the community, for neighborhoods, for social groups, for nonprofits, for families to use at no cost or a very low cost. It's going to be fully outfitted with all the um, modern um, amenities, full professional kitchen, a full bar, everything. And then the space that used to be the uh, sleeping quarters 
for the firefighters, we are going to create a co-sharing space where Columbia Township, I'm going to move my administrative headquarters to, uh, but instead of making it exclusively administrative offices, we're going to open it as a co-sharing space so that other entrepreneurs can launch there, incubate there, share that space with us, and then possibly spin out into Plainville Rotor or Mary Monner or others. And then finally, we're going to move the town hall to the firehouse. And so that main space that you see from the garage doors, we're going to have all of our public meetings there. And so people can sit in chairs, people can sit in tables, they can sit on couches, they can sit at a bar, they can sit at a kitchen counter. We want to facilitate, we want it to be a civic lab where we have soft conversations, great conversations, and sometimes hard conversations. So what we wanted to offer is that um, this Friday to close the month of April for lunch at noon, so Friday the 30th, lunch at noon, uh, BYOBB, bring your own brown bag to a community-wide Zoom. And so we want to take our past multi-months of community engagement, community conversations within Columbia Township with individuals and small groups. And we want to open it up to Marymont and to Fairfax uh, and uh, join a community-wide conversation where Yard and Company will walk you through some amazing slides about how they uh, helped guide us through this re, uh, second act, Firehouse Second Act process, and then a call for you to engage with us and share ideas, memorabilia from when it was a firehouse, uh, other uh, community events. We've heard some amazing things from our community and we would love for you to join our community in sharing uh, your ideas and your memories of it. And so you can find our Zoom uh, webinar, it'll be a Zoom meeting posting uh, in a couple of days, it will be on our website, ColumbiaTWP.org. It'll be on Facebook, Columbia TWP Ohio. Uh, you also can call Lauren, who uh, works with us in customer service, 513, a very easy number, 513-272-0000. And uh, she'll be happy to make sure that we email uh, the link uh, to you. So we wanted to... Uh, show you our neighbors that this is for all of us and we would like for you to be part of the creator group the creator community for making final decisions about the firehouse and then our plan is to open it uh, late summer uh, and uh, also before we open it before we start construction we're going to host an open house music food and we're going to uh, let people come through to see the before it's in rough shape mm -hmm. uh, and, we're, and we're going to do an extreme makeover uh, and we're going to have storyboards in each one of the rooms that will show you history of what used to be in the room and the future of what possibly could be in that room. And we want to have those conversations with people. So we'd love for you to be part of this because you are such an important partner to our community. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. Yeah, Anybody I get any questions. No, I just want Melissa to know that she's got some really awesome neighbors up there. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, um, I, I love it. I think that's a really great idea. Super excited to see something happen. I'm a block from the firehouse, so it's very important to me to, to see that happen. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I think we've been you know, trying to partnership with um, with the with the um, Columbia Township on is the the condition of the road and we have some drainage yeah. things, very yeah. high request questions you know from the side of the neighborhood. I'm assuming that's going to be part of the project. Yes, it is. So part of the project includes well from a from a higher level, just very briefly from a higher level, former administrator Mike Lemon, who Marymount resident, former um, Marymount um, Council, uh, retired and at the point where our prior 10 year roads capital improvement plan was completed. So the past year I've been working on a new 10 year plan. And what we're going to do is an interim resurfacing to Murray because the Murray full redevelopment requires the participation of Marymont. It also requires MSD, Hamilton County stormwater because a lot of the main trunks for drainage and sewer are beneath 
the street, as well as there are tie-ins to major uh, lines on underneath Plainville. So uh, our engineer has told us that we're looking at two plus years of coordination with all of those agencies in order to move forward with a full reconstruction. So we're going to do a temporary resurfacing um, of the entire length of Murray Avenue from Plainville to Berwick, so, so east to Berwick. Um, and then part of the firehouse, there will be permanent public outdoor space in front of the firehouse. And then that street, we are going to do street painting, uh, street public art, and stripe it for a bike lane as well, bike lanes. So we want to slow traffic down. It's, it's, a, it's a perfect street. The traffic's already slow. It's very narrow. We want for uh, mobility, cycling, pedestrians, baby carriages, dogs to be more important than vehicles. And so we are going to do streetscaping and other projects. We have to do things in the interim and then things permanently just because of the huge scale of the project. So um, your dreams will come true maybe in two parts, uh, but definitely um, we, look, we just replaced all the storm sewer uh, system at the firehouse. And then now we're working to put all the utilities under Murray so that we get the air the uh, air cleared and then we can come in and do a, a resurfacing. So I appreciate you providing the opportunity for me to weigh in on that improvement. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Melissa, what are your plans for any additional parking along there? We are talking to two owners that are interested in selling or leasing property and that have uh, vacant buildings and, and substantial parking. So it would be like annex type parking. Mm -hmm. okay, so we, right. we, we, we have two plans of both of them. Uh, both, both owners have told us that they are, uh, we are underway with uh, offers and deals with both owners. Okay, that sounds good. But we still have to close, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, I want to thank you guys for coming in and sort of sharing this with us. This is uh, exciting news. I, I think, you know, to have something like this going on and to be able to partner with you guys, um, it's, it's a win-win for all of us. It's a real plus. Um, so congrats thank on, you. on your, on your plans. I'm looking forward to sort of coming over and seeing the before and the after. I'm looking we'll for, that. I'm looking forward to stuff not falling off the walls at my office. <laughs> 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 and I want to say it's been a pleasure in my first year. I'm now in my second as administrator getting to know you, Mayor Brown, and uh, uh, Council Member Stelzer, uh, and also Council Member Rankin. Uh, met uh, Kelly really early on because of very uh, frequent trips to the firehouse. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's been a great experience, as Brian said. Uh, Brian and I both being new in the, in the last year, the welcome mat that you as Marymont leaders have put out for us. And it is, you know, we're exchanging ideas, we're exchanging resources, yeah. uh, and uh, it's going to be really beneficial to people in both communities. Thank you. Yeah, to all of us. Yeah, thank right, you. Let me just add on a couple of things oh, there. As, as somebody who spent more years of my life in Madison Place than <laughs> in Marymont, uh, this is a pretty exciting project that you have. Um, and if I can find my old Boy Scout uniform, I'll try to dig it out to wear Friday because we had many of our meetings in the basement of that place. So okay. I doubt that it still fits, but, you know, I'll see if can I can I find ask, it. Yeah. Can maybe you just put it on a dummy instead of on? <laughs> <laughs> well, if I was wearing it, maybe that would call for <laughs> but, but no, I think it's very exciting. And I, and I won't reveal the pictures that you sent, Melissa, but if those ideas come through, this is going to be a very, very exciting project. So. Yeah. So we're going to do those. I was just concerned. I had to switch devices at the last minute. So we, we are the, we're going to have uh, pictures from the forties, uh, fifties uh, and future pictures. And also pictures of what the outdoor space and the street will look like when we turn it into somewhat, you know, the civic lab. And so please, it's free zoom, please join us 30 minutes, just grab your lunch bag and, uh, it's, whereas this has been all talking tonight, that's going to be all pictures. And so everyone who's interested will really enjoy it. I, we, we did a dry run on the presentation and even I am blown away. So thank you, everyone. Hey, look thank forward you. to it. Yeah. We look forward to it. Yep, we sure do. Thank you. Thank, thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you all. Good night. See ya. Okay. All right, so moving on.
Questions regarding the regular minutes. All right, I need a motion and a second to accept the minutes. So moved. All right, on roll call, Mr. Bartlett. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Mrs. Rankin. Aye. Mr. Stelzer. Aye. All right, we'll accept those minutes. All right, in communications, you have the Eli's uh, monthly report. Any questions regarding that? And really, you can just talk to her, I guess, contact her. Uh, Bill, I have a few comments. Uh, okay. Uh, Joe would ask me to look into this every month and kind of compare what's going on from last year to this year. All right. So the general fund is up uh, 44 grand, which is 17% over last year. And a lot of that's due to uh, payouts for Margie for her severance of 8,000. And then Tim had a buyback. He was planning on leaving unused vacation of about 14,000. Maintenance payroll is up three grand. And then the pool, between the pool, police and fire, their other type of expenses, they were up uh, 15,000 versus last year. Okay. And as far as the street improvement, last year we had some, uh, last year was 23, this year it's only seven or 8,000. There was uh, some Potosky Road projects, um, uh, cost, Clanger Group was 18,005 plus your regular Duke Energy bill, 2,500. This year we only, we had Choice One for 5,200 and your Duke for 2,500 for the big items. Last year we didn't have the coronavirus, coronavirus relief fund set up. This year we replaced the striker cardiac monitor as the 18, 19,000 for that. And for permanent improvement this year and last year was the ambulance payment. But last year we also had 34,000 to Ford development for 2019 street rehab. And this year we had uh, 10 grand for bathroom and uh, at the tent or yeah, bathroom at the tennis courts and uh, converting the police car to a fire car was another 12,000. So that's what makes up that the big items in, in those funds and those those are the big differences between this year and last year. All right. Hey Tony, are you gonna put some sort of report together? I mean that was a lot of numbers you just spouted in about two minutes. Yeah I can email something to you or is the email fine or you want like a phone? Yeah that that'd be fine. I think it's just easier you know going through that many numbers that fast. It's hard to keep track. Gotcha. So if you, if you if you could put something together I think it would help us all. Absolutely okay. And they'll send that to all of us, Tony? Yeah, I'll send it to Allison. She'll send it out to everybody. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. And thanks for pulling together, Tony. That's, a, that's really helpful. It's a really helpful um, perspective to have. So thank you for doing that. Yes. Okay. All right. So, yeah, we'll do that each month now. Yeah. All right. Um, and then we have the uh, last item there is this um, trash sticker buyback. You've all seen a copy of the form. Um, just as, as a reminder, tomorrow's trash pickup will be the last pickup upon which you would have to put a sticker. Going forward from there, there will be no stickers and the trash buyback sticker program will be underway. So we're kind of hoping that, you know, folks that, that are out there with the stickers will come in and let's, let's see to that. We don't want this to sort of straggle on all summer long if we can avoid it. And the, the, by the way, the form will be available, I think, on the website. Mm -hmm. And we'll have we'll have some. You can pick some up downstairs in the lobby as well. All right, all right, Tony. Permission to address council. Do we have somebody in the waiting room? Um, I don't think I'm set up as an administrator this time. Uh, uh, we've uh, we've got one attendee outside. Oh, wait, wait, yeah, we do here. One attendee, uh, Matthew Ayer. All right, I'll let him speak. Bring him in. All right. Uh, Matthew, can you unmute yourself, please? Matt? Matt, you're on mute. Yeah, it'll be so nice when we don't have to do this anymore. Oh, I tell you. Uh, Sorry about that. Involved in two weeks. Okay, there he is. Okay. Can you hear me okay. Yeah, we yeah. can hear you. Okay, I was uh, had my email open and somehow didn't notice that I was on mute. But anyway, um, 
I'm Matthew Ayer. I live at 3908 Pocahontas Avenue, and I just wanted to take a few minutes to address council this evening. And um, I, first, I wanted to thank council and our mayor and our village staff for the work that they're doing in um, plotting a course for the future of our emergency services. And um, it's my understanding that council is considering hiring Kramer and Associates to perform an independent third party review of our emergency services and to make recommendations. And um, the purpose of my getting um, coming to the meeting tonight is just to support and endorse this initiative. And I do have some reasons. I shot an email to you um, that summarizes those as well. I'll be brief. Um, I just wanted to uh, emphasize that the focus of a study like this is the, the, the highest priority. And the first thing that we should be looking at is making sure that we're delivering premium quality fire and EMS services to our residents. And, and businesses and other institutions, schools, churches, everything like that, and um, emphasize the costs are certainly a factor. But to me, and I think to most residents, they're secondary unless we, we truly need to compromise service for some financial reasons, which I don't believe will end up being the case. Could be, but um, I doubt it. Um, I like the idea of an independent study um, and an uh, independent analysis based on experience. Um, from an expert who has worked with dozens of different municipalities. We're gonna get new ideas and a fresh perspective. I've read three of the Kramer reports in particular for other communities. And um, some things that I really like about the work that that company does is that the report doesn't say do this or do that. It gives pros and cons of various options. Um, the consultant works directly with the, with the municipality staff as one of the primary sources of information. The reports seem to be collaborative and I think that's the way it should be. Um, the reports always um, recognize the very high value in locally operated services and, and that's very well explained in the report. And in our case, I think it's particularly important. We have a very long history and tradition of Marymount having its own fire department. Um, I, I like the new ideas and emerging trends that are presented. And I especially like that a report like this can be shared openly with the community. And I think that there's value in the transparency of this and the education that would provide to our residents. Um, and uh, another item is I'd really like to encourage council to allow Kramer to just kind of do this kind of wide open, consider a set of feasible options that come out of their own analysis, as opposed to directing them to some very specific or narrow target of um, uh, sets of options. Just let the experts in the field give us the logical alternatives based on what they see as best practice experience. Um, and the uh, last couple of points, I've gotten an impression, it might not be accurate, but there's been some uh, hesitation to hire a consultant. And I think it's been perceived that this could be a step toward eliminating our own local services in favor of some other model. And um, I don't actually think that that's the case. What I think is that um, we should embrace an independent analysis and that the knowledge we're going to gain is power and uh, communication with our community is extremely important. And this is just a really good step to assess what our needs are and how we'll meet those needs and what the alternatives might be. And um, just for my own guess, I don't have a crystal ball, but I think that when our community um, sees what we have, what we might need, what best practices are, those types of things, I think the community will be very supportive of ensuring that we keep these premium level services as a very high priority. The support for emergency services in this community, I've lived here for 34 years, they're very high. And I even think that if it means we need to give you some additional money to make some, um, or to make some other changes, I think the community will be very receptive and supportive, um, given some high quality information. I think it's a great time to sort it out. And I think that's pretty much everything I had to say. And thank you for your time this evening. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Hey, does anybody have any questions for Matt? Y'all good? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, All Matt. Right, Tony, Tony do, do we have anyone else? Uh, no other attendees, Bill. Okay. All right. All right. So motion to pay the bills. Everybody looked over the bills. Mm -hmm. Any questions regarding the bills? No, I do not. No, no. All right, I need a motion and a second then to pay the bills. So moved. Rob's got the second. Mr. Bartlett. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Mrs. Rankin. Aye. Mr. Stelzer. Aye. 
All right, pay the bills. All right, Tony, looks like uh, one uh, committee report rules and law. Yeah, several reports. First one from the Rules and Law Committee regarding chain link fences. Uh, the Rules and Law Committee met on April 14th, 2021 to update a prior decision made in the committee regarding a strategy to mitigate the problem of chain link fences in the village that are in poor condition. The prior strategy had not been implemented back in 2017. The committee reviewed the prior decision, which was to designate chain link fences as a public nuisance and require them to be mitigated. The building department would have discretion over the policy for mitigation. After reviewing the existing code, the committee voted unanimously to define chain link fences as a public nuisance and require them to be abated. The building department will lead and supervise this process as stated in the code of ordinances. Respectively submitted, signed by Maggie Palazzolo, Chairperson, Marcy Lewis, and Rob Bartlett. All right, you've heard the report. I need a motion and a second to accept the report. Hey, hey Bill, I need to make a motion to amend that report. I was not at that meeting and um, I didn't vote. So um, I don't have a problem with the conclusion, but I, you know, just Rob and Maggie were at that meeting. I missed it through a, an error on my part. I apologize to you both for that. I was, you know, I'm sorry about that, but um, I just don't think it adequately uh, states what, um, what transpired. And I'd just like a motion to amend that uh, just Maggie and Rob were there and that they voted. Okay. I don't, think it actually states who was there. You, all you would really have to do is not sign it. Well, it says the committee was there and she's part of the committee, so. Yeah, committee. and that it voted unanimously. So you want to just confirm oh. that the attending at the meeting were? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that should be in there. I thought I included that when I sent it to Joni, yeah. so maybe I didn't. Yeah, just the present were. Just put present, so. you know, it was Bill and Rob and I. That should do it. All right. Yeah. All right, so we'll add, all right. all right. Do you have that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, Tony, yeah. if you send me a copy with just that line added, then Rob and I can sign it and get it back to you. All right, I need a motion and a second to amend this report. So, so moved. Second. Rob, Rob had the motion. Marcy had the second, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Bartlett. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Hi. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Mrs. Rankin. Aye. Mr. Stelzer. Aye. All right, so do we have any discussion regarding the report other than the amendment? Maggie, can you just explain like in layman's terms or what that means? Sure, so um, years ago, the reason this all came about was there were a bunch of yucky looking chain link fences back in the historic district. And, um, Dan at the time, and I don't know if the building department also, but they were working together to try to find kind of like, they'd tried the carrot and now they were onto the stick approach, trying to get the landlord who owned a lot of these buildings to try to fix them. Um, and so what he did was put this into my committee. We met upon it and there is a, um, a prior ruling and some other case law to justify that other communities have designated chain link fences a public nuisance, so, which is a legal term. Um, and so once you do that, you can require somebody to abate the public nuisance, meaning take it down. And so because our code already states that you can't put up chain link fences, like they're not allowed in our code, that if these had to be taken down, then the person who owns the property anywhere would be allowed to put up a new fence if they wanted to, it just wouldn't be able to be chain link. Um, and so that would you know, get rid of the problem of the rusting and the holes and the trees growing through them and the vines growing all around them. So um, I guess in the meantime, like post decision and then prior to the implementation by the building department, the guy went ahead and removed all his chain link fences and they're gone now. And so Dan's like, okay, well, we don't need it anymore. So it never got enacted. And so now basically what we're doing is going back and doing the same thing. There aren't any that I know of that are really problematic. In fact, a lady really close to those properties had one that wasn't great. And at the time when he removed them, she actually put in a really nice new one, which technically wasn't a code, but it's shiny and brand new now. So kind of our idea with letting the building department have discretion, um, like the original process we kind of wanted to implement said that the building department would send a notice to the property owner and say, look, you have this chain link fence, it's been 
designated a public nuisance, we, re we need you to abate it, but then they would be willing to work with the owner, you know, if it wasn't in bad shape to just not require a financial hardship of having a person just take down a perfectly good fence, but to kind of keep an eye on it and when it needs to be replaced, they get a nudge. Um, and so that's kind of where we are with it now. We don't want to do anything completely over the top and tell somebody they have to take down a perfectly good fence, but we want to um, make it clear and, and then prevent it from happening again where things get bad and we have to go negotiate a solution. So yeah, that's where yeah. all that came from. It's a big long so, story. So Maggie, um, I've got a question. So does this just, is this just residential areas? Because there obviously are areas in the village that have chain link fence in public. Correct. So there's the pool and there's the tennis courts and there's all these other places. Um, and so we discussed that in our meeting, which you can, I think you can watch it. Um, but if the village itself needs a chain link fence or if there's a compelling reason that a business or even a private property owner needs a chain link fence, um, I mean, they can always apply for a variance and that will be considered. And if there's some compelling reason that a chain link fence is the best option for that, then obviously that's up to the building department. So um, I have a follow-up question for Eileen, please. Um, Eileen, so now that we don't have a, a building administrator anymore, um, is that something the zoning officer would, would that be encompassed in the zoning officer's duties to, to deal with these fences? Yeah, because that's um, that's in our zoning ordinances. Yeah, that's in okay. our, our stuff. Mm -hmm. I think the gist of it is basically it's going forward. And like, like Maggie tried to explain, we don't want to be onerous and go around the village and make people take out perfectly good chain link fences. But going forward, fences will deteriorate. Weeds and brush and roots and everything else will grow up. And at some point they'll start looking bad and we want to be, be able to be in a position to tell them that they're going to have to mitigate that in some way. I mean, that's kind of the gist of what we're doing here. I, I only got one question though. You know, when do you define if it's crossed the line to become a public nuisance? I so mean, do we, we have... are defining all chain link fences in their very existence a public nuisance. So does that mean all public fences have to be removed because mm -hmm. they're public nuisance? I mean, we can take that option. We can take that approach. So what we're doing is basically letting the okay, building- Okay, but, but what, what are the rules that we're going to put in place right now? We don't, so we don't have that. We're going to let the building department determine that and let their, I mean, I don't know that that's my discretion, like the writing processes for the build, building department. We're enacting the code and passing it down to the building department who we can work with. I I help. guess I would like to table this until I see what those standards are to make sure that they're reasonable before I would pass something saying we're going to declare fences a, a public nuisance. Well, so, so Joe, Joe, just so that we're clear here, what you're talking about, though, is sort of a way to outline when a fence reaches a certain point of deterioration that then it has to be mitigated. Is that what you mean? Exactly. Yeah. At, at, at that point, it's declared a public nuisance and it's got to come out. And I can certainly share some of the um, characteristics of deteriorated fences that uh, Don and I have used. And I think we could even get more specific with chain link, if that would help. I, I, I think that's, you know, before I would vote on something like this, I'd like to see what standards we're gonna apply to, to make sure they're reasonable. So Eileen, can you write something up then? Yes, yep, I can do that. Okay. All right, so then we're going to we're, we're going to have a motion to table this. Okay. All right, I need a motion and a second to table. So right. hearing none. I'll move. <laughs> I'll, I'll second it. All right, Mr. Bartlett, um, Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Mrs. Rankin. Aye. Mr. Selzer. Aye. All right. I mean, Eileen, possibly you can have something, you know, for next council and we'll, you know, we'll take this off the table. You can introduce what these would be and we can move forward with this. Yeah, I will um, try and get that to you at the end of this week or the beginning of next. So you have time to look it over in time. Okay. okay. Thanks, Eileen. Yeah. Thank you, Eileen. Thanks. Uh, all right, Tony, uh, looks like health and rec. 
I love it when it people is, know the answers. Yeah, health, health and rec committee regarding donated play sets, tree work, and landscaping recommendations. On April 16th and April 22nd, the health and recreation committee met to discuss recommendations for 2021 pool and tennis dues recommendation. Uh, meeting attendees at one or both meetings includes included council member Seltzer, Graves, Lewis, and Mayor Brown, maintenance department supervisor John Schippenberg, pool manager Jordan Shad, uh, pool commission members Lauren Halad, Terry Donovan, and Mandy Rohal. The committee decided to recommend to the entire council that the pool cannot accept the donation of a residential play set since it would not meet guidelines established for play equipment in public parks. The committee decided to recommend to the entire council that distressed and dangerous surrounding the pool party be removed at a cost not to exceed $10,000. The committee decided to recommend to the entire council that certain area in the front of the pool house and interior pool grounds be landscaped at a cost not to exceed $10,000 and attached are several documents with additional information regarding the above recommendations, respectively submitted and signed by Joe Seltzer, Chairperson, Avia Graves, and Marcy Lewis. All right, you've heard the report. I need a motion and a second to accept. I moved. Second. Second. Yeah, Joe, jo, uh, between dangerous and surrounding, did you mean to put something in there? Yeah, trees are supposed to be in there. And, and Tony, I'd, I'd emailed right. that to you before the meeting. I don't know if you got a copy of it or not. Oh, sorry. So, yeah. Distressed and dangerous trees. All right, so we're going to right, make a formal it. amendment to that, or are we just going to write the word in? Just amend it. All right, I need a motion and a second to write the word trees in. So moved. Second. Mr. Bartlett. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Mr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Ms. Rankin. Aye. Mr. Stelzer. Aye. <clears throat> All right, did, did, did I have a motion and a second then to accept the report? Second. 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 All right. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, yeah, I, I'm just clarifying that. So it says attached are several documents with additional information. And I'm assuming that's the number of PDFs, Joe, that came out. Yeah, I, I sent those questions. last night. And yeah. we can go. Let, let, me, let me step through these so we can uh, walk okay. everybody through. Thank all the you. documents because there was a lot of pdfs but i wanted to give you the color versions of those documents so you could kind of see the landscaping plan so let's just uh, start with the first one being the swing set um, what we found uh, that we really cannot accept donations of residential swing sets into uh, public park space there are uh, rules we have to comply with uh, there are standards that have been developed by the Consumer uh, Protection Agency that residential uh, swing sets just do not comply with those rules. And our insurance company warned us that you know it is not a good idea to put a residential play set into a commercial space. So I, you know, th there is no question from the uh, from the Health and Rec Committee that you know we just can't do anything like that, even though it would save us a tremendous amount of money. Uh, the cost of a residential uh, uh, place that is probably a third uh, or 25 percent of uh, the cost of a commercial. But there is a manual probably 150 pages thick that cites standards that you have to follow for a uh, uh, place set in a uh, uh, public park or playground. And that's what our pool is. So uh, that, that was a pretty easy decision, you know, uh, to make it a recommendation not to uh, not to allow that to happen. Uh, regarding the um, trees, we'll do that one next. Uh, there really wasn't a PDF attached to, to, to the information I sent over the weekend regarding you know, the exact um, uh, trees to be removed at the pool. The uh, estimate is about $9,000, but we rounded it up to 10 just to give us a little bit of room in case uh, anything popped up. Uh, but at this point, I think the trees have now been marked. I think they've been reviewed by a lot of people. They are trees that are either distressed, dangerous, and I guess I learned another term today that they are actually invasive, some of them that are being removed. So I think anybody who looks at those trees would agree that those trees need to come out, uh, especially with um, you know, the uh, work we're doing to uh, re re uh, renew the uh, area as far as new roofs, new fences, a lot of painting going on. Uh, we had one tree come down last year and, and put holes into the pavilion roof, which led to us having to do the roof project. Uh, so I think there's some other ones that are precariously um, 
uh, leaning in that same direction that could you know, potentially, you know, either hit the pool, hit the fence, hit the roofs. I mean, it, you know, I think I, I don't know too many people would disagree that they need to come out. And uh, this is a perfect opportunity as the fence comes down to get the heavy equipment in to get those trees out of there. So it's, um, you know, there's a lot of reasons uh, that this has popped up as a project to do. Uh, and again, the estimate is not to exceed $10,000, even though we think we'll probably be below that amount with the actual cost. Uh, we're still trying to you know, pin that uh, amount down. I also shared over the weekend, um, we have uh, the, we've got the fortunate uh, occurrence that we have the um, Marymount resident, who's also the head screen keeper at uh, Hyde Park Country Club, has done some plans after consulting with their horticulturalists. So we've been getting a lot of free uh, um, professional services in this process. And they came up with a design plan for the um, uh, landscaping, not only inside the pool, but outside the pool, and actually uh, kind of wraps around to part of that parking lot. Um, I actually talked to the person who actually did the landscaping plan 30 years ago for inside the pool, and it's probably time to upgrade. I mean, that, that plan that was put in has overgrown. We got a lot of ivy, you know, it just, it's, it's time to, you know, freshen up the landscaping. The good news is, is that, um, you know, we're going to probably ask or we're going to recommend for uh, an approval of an amount not to see $10,000. We probably will not come anywhere near that amount based upon the plan that you all saw uh, with the recommendation of the different plants and the prices we think we can get out of Natorps using, um, you know, some uh, uh, connections to get volume pricing. Uh, and all the work to plant is going to be done by uh, volunteers of the uh, Pool Advisory Board, while being supervised by uh, the Marymount resident, Pat O'Brien, who's the uh, head greenskeeper. So pretty confident that we're going to get a very professional um, uh, work at the end of this thing. And then I did ask the question over the weekend, okay, who's going to maintain this in the future? Because it's one thing to plant something. It's another thing to keep the weeds out and keep it looking good. And yeah. they're going to recruit Pool Advisory Board members to do that process. Okay. So the good news is, we're getting a, a very nice plan, uh, professionally done, professionally installed as best we can, even though the volunteers are doing it. So um, I think we're getting tremendous value here for this amount, not to exceed $10,000 for the uh, 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 landscaping uh, to be done down there. So if anybody has any questions on the, the PD, I know there's a lot of PDFs, but like I said, I wanted to share the color versions of them so you could see what we're talking about, including I, I put one file on there that had pictures of the plants because as people tend to use the Latin equivalent for plants, I have no idea what they're talking about. So I really had to look it up and so I could include pictures in the document to try to uh, um, help everybody along in the process, so. Um, Joe, I have a quick question. You said that the team of volunteers to do the planting will be the um, pool advisory board. Okay, is that enough manpower for all those plants? Well, I know my wife just volunteered too, so we're actually getting more volunteers. And I'm sure if we publish something, we'll get more people to help. Okay. But, but okay. the key to the process is having somebody to help um, supervise. You know, you know they're, they're like anything, planting plants is somewhat of an art more than a science. And so, <laughs> you know, it's good to have some people there to know what they're doing, you know, to, to point to the location and show them the depths to, to, to you know, to, to make the holes and all the rest of the stuff. So. So I'm sure we can probably recruit some more along the way, but you okay. know, I just heard from my wife last night. She's willing to volunteer. Okay. Yeah. It's just, it's a lot. So I just wanted to make and, sure. and I will share this <laughs> as we just got a contribution of $500 towards the annuals uh, uh, cost down there. So the, the cost of the annuals that will go in, uh, that will add some color to the, to the planting beds. So hey, Jill, why don't you go ahead and thank, thank her. You know, you know, it's, um, um I'll do that in good due time. But again, uh, so there's there's contributions coming in, and hopefully we're going to find some more. I mean, as we go along this process. So, All right. um, you know, as as and I and I will say this: we're making very good progress on the painting of the outside, including, you know, painting the slats behind the windows, which has turned into a bit of a fiasco because of the original design of the building. But I really believe this place is going to look very very nice when the pool opens on uh, for Memorial Day. We got, right. we're now within what, uh, about uh, less than 30 days, but I think we're going to get everything done. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to look very, very nice. And I did share uh, a schedule that kind of outlined where we're at on all the spending at this point, because I think that's been a question 
about are we staying within budget? And as of right now, we've got about $20,700 additional. There has been some talk about tables and umbrellas, but we've, uh, I hate to use the pun, we've tabled that until we figure out uh -huh. whether, whether we have any additional major items that happen. And we'll find out about major items when we put water in the pool. Yeah. And we kind of discussed in our committee, just to add to that, that, you know, it might be a good idea, a very good idea um, to save, you know, the rest of that money you know, um, for any potential issues that come from filling it or as well as anything else that happens, you know, throughout the course of the year. So, yeah, we'll, we'll know more when we fill it and turn the equipment on as far as the pumps and everything else. So, um, and so you know, we got a little bit of a reserve here to kind of deal with those items um, as, as, as we move forward. So, yeah. Um, Are any questions? I had mine. No. <clears throat> it's going to look great. It's all going to look good when it all comes together. All right, on roll call, Mr. Bartlett. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Mrs. Rankin. Aye. Mr. Stelzer. Aye. All right, we'll accept that report. Do we need to have a resolution for the spending, or are we going to go out and just say... And that's a question to you. Are we going to need a resolution on that spending or, or are we just basically saying okay in this report? Uh, Bill, I'm going to put together a resolution anyway just for the heck of it. I'll put an emergency provision in it so it gets approved at the next council meeting, okay? Sounds for a question, in theory, we've already approved the 125000 This is just approve, approving the components of the 125. Yeah, just the allocation. Sure. So do, we, do we need a second are, resolution? Or? Well, are we going to select a particular contractor to do it? I'm sorry, what was that? Ed? Are we going to select a particular contractor to do it all? Or yeah, we, 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 we typically that? turn that over. And in, in the case of the tree work, it's going to be John figuring out. I think he already knows it's probably going to be Davy Tree who does most of our uh, tree work. And yeah, in the case of, of the uh, uh, case of the landscaping, it's buying plants from, a, uh, from, from probably Natorps. Would, was all this work originally budgeted at the beginning of the year? Yes, we have. Yes. We allocated one hundred twenty-five thousand in a permanent improvement fund and about sixteen thousand in the general fund for this type of work. Okay, then I don't think you need a resolution. Just go ahead and okay. pass it today, and then go out and hire whomever John says to hire. You'll be fine. Okay, so, so I just want to. I want to. I'm fine with that. I just want to clarify then, because we in the finance committee we've done. We've been told to do it differently. We've been, you know, in the permanent improvement, the police have put stuff in there and the fire department have put stuff in there and we've approved it as part of the permanent improvement budget process. And then we've said, hey, finance committee, you gotta come up with a resolution as well as a report. So I, I just, I really would love to have some consistency here. And I'm fine, I'm fine with this saying, hey, if it was in the budget, then we don't need a resolution. I just wanna be consistent. I understand that Rob, you and I have talked about that on many different occasions and I think what I've told you before is that transparency is a key on all of these expenditures. And you're hundred percent right that in the past, I've told you certain resolutions need to be done when we're gonna subcontract with one particular contractor over another contractor. Some of those items that uh, we previously discussed, I was not aware that they were previously budgeted for. When Joe tells me right now that these were budgeted for and approved at the beginning, what we're going to do with this landscaping and the John Sherpenberg is going to be the guy that's going to basically ramrod the uh, work that's going to get done. Then I think that's fine to do it that way. Okay. okay. And, and again, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying it's wrong. I just want to, so, so next time, next, next time, the perm, if there's permanent improvement spending that was already approved in the budget and we're just saying, okay, let's go do it now. We don't have to have a resolution for it. So long as we're not going to uh, do any kind of competitive bidding for it. If you do competitive bidding for it, Rob, I do think you need to to uh, to um, have a particular or have a resolution to select that particular contractor that y'all agree on. Okay, because because a lot of times with the fire and police, they have that thing with through the state of Ohio where they can get the best bid no matter what, and so there's right. no there's no bidding process for that. So again, I just I, if if that's the case, it sounds like that would also not require a resolution. It just requires the report to be done. Absolutely, that would be correct. Okay, thank you. I just, I, again, I just want to make sure I understand what the process is that we're going to do consistently going forward. 
Yeah, the, the other reason I'm asking the question of just specifically about the landscaping, the, the, the tree work, I think John's going to be done uh, probably in two or three weeks when the fence comes down. So we're not under a big crunch there. We are under a time crunch about getting these plants in. Understood. So that's, and that's probably going to happen, you know, this week. Okay. I got you. Finance committee, Tony. Um, organizational structure. Yeah, we got four from the finance committee. The first one is uh, Marymount Village Administrator. Uh, the finance committee met on Friday, April sixteenth, twenty twenty one, at two o'clock p.m. via video conference to discuss if Marymount should hire a village administrator. Present at the meeting were finance committee members Rob Bartlett, Kelly Rankin, and Joe Stelzer and Mayor Bill Brown. Uh, the finance committee has previously shared with council a list of activities that are not getting done today that we believe could be done if Marymount hired a village administrator. See attached. When looking at other similar sized communities, the following all have a village administrator, Fairfax, Terrace Park, Amberley Village, Glendale, Wyoming, Columbia Township, Silverton, Deer Park, and Evendale. The finance committee has created a list of responsibilities for the village administrator role, which is attached to this document. The responsibilities are in priority order. The dotted line in the responsibilities provides a demarcation between those responsibilities which are high priorities and those which can be filled later. When hiring a village administrator, uh, while hiring a village administrator would mean incremental costs in talking to a variety of communities, the village administrator role can pay for itself via a combination of improving operating efficiencies, obtaining external funding for projects and improving economic development, which in turn increases the tax base. The final pay uh, for the role will be determined by the skill level and the experience of the person we hire but it is reasonable to assume the salary will be likely around $100,000 per year. Uh, the village administrator role already exists in Mary Mott's code book, so no legislation is required to create this role. The role is appointed by the mayor uh, with the approval of council. If council accepts this recommendation, the next step will be to start the search process. Respectively submitted and signed by Rob Barlett, Chairman, Kelly Rankin, and Joe Seltzer. All right, so you've heard the report. I need a motion in a second to accept the report. I'll move. I need a second. Second. All right, Rob's got the second. All right, discussion. Uh, I just want to say I've had uh, a couple of people, you know, that have, that have seen this, ask me in regards to saying that it will pay for itself, asking if, and, and the reasons are certainly valid that it would, but just if there could be some figures put out that kind of might show the balance between what the salary is going to be and, and the potential income to offset that. Or the potential revenue to offset that. Is that anything we could come up with well, estimates on? Yeah, again, I, I shared previously with council the amount of the projects that Jenny Kaminer, the, the, the village administrator there, has gotten, um, and it's four point seven five million dollars. Right. I, I think we just, we just I think we just heard, you know, you just heard from Melissa Taylor that she was able to get five hundred thousand dollars for doing the uh, Mass in place. And, and Joe, you talked to Melissa. She's actually gotten other funds too, right? Yeah, she, I think she's approached most, almost a million dollars in the year that she's been in, in office. So, I mean, it, it's going to be really hard to sit there and say specifically, this is going to come in you know, this date, this date, this date. But as we talked in the meeting, you know, th there's, a, there's a couple things that are critical in the, in the, in the, as part of this process. Going after grants. The one thing that we need to go after grants is projects, you know, and I think the concept came up in the committee meeting about, well, we can just hire somebody who another community is using to just write the grants. Writing the grants is at the end of the process and a very small part of the process. It's identifying projects that uh, would qualify for the various grant programs that are all over the state uh, and, and can come from, you know, state, federal, uh, and or private uh, uh, foundations. So it's, it's, it's a process that you need somebody to coordinate from day one all the way through that process and not just have somebody say, oh, go, go get me a grant. Mm -hmm. Because the key is finding the right projects to chase the right money. And I'm absolutely convinced that, you know, um, I can't show you on paper exactly which grant we're going to get if we get an administrator doing their job properly but I can virtually guarantee we're going to see some grants coming through that process. Well, I was asked the question, so I just wanted to, you know, yep. put it out and there. Again, and, 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 I, and I will also add that I think, you know, we have a little bit of a problem in this village about project management. As, as we go to try to tackle these bigger projects we want to do out there, 
we need somebody to be the coordinator of these things. And we're seeing this a little bit with the pool, trying to figure out, okay, who's going to be doing what pieces of it? Right. Yeah. Valid point. So, there, so there's, there's other pieces, you know, I, I, I really believe we're going to be able to pay for this position easily. And, and, and let's not even, let's not even, you know, go down the path of, or maybe we should go down the path of talk about economic development, which is somebody, you need somebody there understanding what opportunities we have, plugging ourselves into all the various um, um, options that are out there, whether it's tax, tax increment financing and all the rest of the things that are available to try to make things happen. Because it's not happening. And, and you just heard about that today, that basically the Porsche dealership is paying for part of the, the firehouse also. Right. Because of the tax increment uh, financing that they put in place, that part of that has to go for those types of projects. So mm -hmm. this is beyond, you know, and, and, you know, I think I understand development pretty well, but just to spend all that time to try to figure out how to plug all these parts in, we need somebody full time doing that. Yep. Yeah. My concern on this, though, was that um, aside from those aspects, Joe, which, you know, may, may be good, I, I'm interested in, like Rob and I sort of had talked about this, about this person being able to wear, you know, a dual hat in this role. You know, I'm interested in more of this person's ability to, you know, work with the financial aspects of the village and, you know, sort of create, you know, beyond what Tony does, uh, you know, trends and statements and things that, you know, would make it more easy for us to understand, you know, where we are at any given moment, you know, in our finances. Do we, are we going to be able to find, I mean, do you think we'll be able to find, an, you know, such a person? Uh, and, and as I said in the committee meeting, I, I don't disagree that that should be one of the characteristics of the administrator to help us through that process, to help us redefine what type of um, uh, financial information we need to help manage the village, help help the uh, council members and the mayor have the financial information necessary to be able to make good decisions. And yeah. as I said, yeah. and as I said in the meeting, we've got probably eight or ten uh, characteristics we're looking for in a person. And we're not going to know until we go out and start looking how many of those characteristics we can probably fill. You know, if somebody comes in and they've got seven of them and we can somehow uh, they can learn the other three, then we're OK. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, you know, it's going to be virtually impossible to find somebody who's going to be able to do all 10. Right. And that's up to us, you know, by by being in control of who we talk to, you know, we, we place the emphasis on where we want it to be. Right. Right. It'll actually be part of how we post the role, too. So I, I told you guys in the committee, I've got examples from Center for Local Government of 19 different job postings that have been put up there for a village administrator role specifically. So we have a lot of good templates as a starting point to build on and say, here's what we want to tailor to our specific situation. You know, and, and I mentioned one other thing in the, in the media that I think is kind of critical. And Bill, and I hope you're going to re agree with me. We've got a lot of resident commissions in this village. Mm -hmm which is great, you know, that, that we got people willing to volunteer and provide their talents and try to get stuff done. But the idea of trying to coordinate and be the liaison for all those residence commissions, is probably a full-time job in itself. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. and, so, and so again, that's another aspect of this thing that, you know, if we have an administrator that can help each one of those commissions get through their process, like right now we're running down the idea about, um, you know, alcohol being served at pool events. And right now it's myself and, and one of the residents and a couple other people trying to figure that out. And, and actually, I will tell you this, Melissa Taylor and I have been talking in the last week, trying to figure it out for both communities. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these, these are skill sets that, you know, hopefully we can you know, find in a person that, that you know, can do this type of stuff as these questions pop up. Yeah. Yeah, that's great, Joe. I mean, like I said, I'm not I'm not disagreeing with that per se. It's just that my emphasis is going to be more on the financial end of things than you know, looking for grants or managing pro projects. Not that those aren't important. I'm not saying, but um, I'm just you know, it's going to be it's going to be interesting, I guess. You know, looking for this person. Well, and that's why you're in charge. Well, this is going to be a collaborative effort. I mean, yeah. 
So again, what this was just, the, the, this, this was the recommendation to go ahead and start a search process. Yeah. And, and I, I think, do, do we want to discuss the other idea that we talked about in the committee meeting that the search is going to be done with Bill, Rob, and we're going to try to recruit Mike Lemon into the research committee? That was Somebody who has 20 years experience as an administrator uh, and, and can help us, you know, try to identify and, and you know, vet the people who are coming in. Well, you just did. Well, you kind of just <laughs> yeah, did. There you yeah, go. You kind of just All did. right. Obviously, done. it's a resource that's out there. And obviously, you know, we're going to want to, you know, inquire or ask him for help or assistance should we need it for sure okay yeah so yeah hey hey joe if you don't mind me weighing in on this thing another thing you might want to do is you know i've always said the two best administrators that i knew were mike lemon and then ken geis over there in uh, union township and when you talk about a lot of marymount residents being on commissions and what have you i think ken geis might be a guy that you'd want to at least contact to find out from him what qualities or what responsibilities he thinks are most appropriate for a, a village administrator. Right, mm -hmm. Bill and Bill and Kelly already talked to him yeah, uh, we, about yeah. a month ago. So we, uh, yeah, had a, a nice yeah, conversation so. with him. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just, Thanks, Ed. Yeah, he's a smart guy. He's a helpful guy. Yeah. All right, any other comments? Well, I mean, I had a couple. Um, first of all, Rob, I had asked you for the list of uh, grants that you, you were talking about, and I, I never got that email. So Bill, Bill's one, and if you go back to the committee, if you go back to the council minutes, Bill said he would send it to you. So I, I, I assume Bill was gonna do that. I'm happy to send it to you if you want, but that was, Bill was gonna send it to you. Thanks, Rob. Was that the meeting? Yeah, yeah, all right. Those, bus, those, those bus remember. tracks are on your back, Bill. Yeah, yeah. Um, Let me catch my breath here a minute. I've just been put under the bus. Yeah, sorry about that. I mean, that doesn't, I, what I remember no, is I, I asked Rob probably and did send it to me, to you know, oh, a, you in, in a myriad of other emails that I got. I, if it's my mistake, I'm sorry. Um, I guess, you know, I, I understand all the, the reason, the rationale, and I agree with the rationale and concept. But my concern, you know, and I know that what Joe is going to say is how can we afford not to, but you know, on the March 1st meeting, you know, he basically asked you and Tony to kind of come up with where we are fiscally. And when you're talking about a $100,000 commitment and you're saying, okay, it'll pay for itself, but we don't really have any numbers or a timeline of when that'll be. I just feel that it's putting the, the cart before the horse to some extent. And, you know, kind of piggybacking on what Matt Ayers was talking about you know, as opposed to, you know, just doing a study that looks at the fire department. I mean, I would put out there as a council that we need either a residence committee or a consultant that would, you know, give us a comprehensive overview of this village in every area and show us what we need. So we have a strategic plan because it feels to me like we're just kind of plugging holes. Well I want to answer your first question again. I think I think the Melissa Taylor. If we can't say exactly how much and when, but I think Melissa Taylor is a good proxy for what what you can get with a village administrator. She's been in the role for about a year. She's got almost a million dollars. You know that in and of itself does pay for her salary, which is I'm not going to say. Well, it was in one of the reports I sent to you guys before. I don't want to sit there and publicize all over the place what her salary is, but um, easily many times over. And so the, that is a way to sit there and say, don't know exactly what, but that's a good proxy for the fact that if, so that one person there has done more than enough, just like Jenny Kaminer has as well. Um, and then the, the thing about, as you, as you talk to anybody, especially somebody like Mike Lemon. So Bill and I have both talked to Mike Lemon about this multiple times. And Mike, Mike has said, because Mike was also a mayor. He's, he's a council member, he was mayor, and he's been a village, well, it's not, it's actually a township administrator. And he said, you really need to have somebody like that in this kind of organization to help run your organization more streamlined, to do all the stuff that, that Joe was just talking about, grant money, financial, help you with the financial running of the village, like Bill's been asking for, and then also um, going out and project management. I mean, that's something we, we don't have right now. And, and it's, you know, Bill's plate's full. He's got a lot of stuff going on right now. And I think we need to have these kind of resources to help us get the things done and take us to where we need to be. Because again, we've continued to just, 
I, I would contend that we have continued to do patchwork stuff so far. Everything has been patchwork so far. And that's where we did step back and, the, and we did share, the committee did share in the previous report, here's what everyone else is doing in terms of how they're structured within their, their organizations. And um, the only other place that does not have a village administrator right now is Newtown. And Newtown tried it. They tried it on a part-time basis for two years and it didn't work. So they stopped doing the part-time. But everybody else has a village administrator. And, they've, and everyone you've talked to, if you talk to any of them, they all said that they got a, they definitely got the value out of that, having that role in their organization. Let, let, let me ask this, Rob, you're making some good points there. I'm wondering, you, you know, I mean, I know the comparison to some of these other communities and so on and so forth. I don't think they're totally 100% good comparisons. Do, you know, are, and maybe this is a question to Joe, are we big enough to have a full-time administrator? How do we know we couldn't get by with a part-time administrator? Newtown tried that. Their, their budget is about the same as ours, a little bit less than ours. Theirs, theirs is less than ours. They tried a part-time administrator, somebody who's experienced, mm -hmm. somebody who's sort of on the back end of their career, and it didn't work. They, they didn't, the person wasn't able to do all the stuff that they needed to get done. And so they stopped. And so, you know, two years of trial and it, it did not work for them. Um, if you just look around, again, our, our budgets are similar to a lot of these places that are listed. You know, Glendale, Amberley Village, Terrace Park, ours is significantly higher than Terrace Parks. Um, I mean, doesn't Terrace Park just have the police chief on it? They, they do have these two hatted, and if you want to try and do that, but we've got a fire chief, who, who are you going to do? Who's going to be it? Well, I'm just... I'm I'm just trying to ask the question. Here. Yeah, I know, but I just I don't think that we have the kind well, of let, let, me, let me weigh in here a little bit. You know, it's, number one, at this point in time, the only thing we're asking for is to start to search. We're not saying we're hiring. And, and a key component of this whole thing is if we find the right person. If we can't find the right person, then, yeah, there's probably uh, not a, a, a good reason not to do it. But I think at this point, we've been talking about this for a while. We had 90 days to, to basically evaluate all these options. And, again, the nothing really came out that seemed to be a viable option. I guess I would ask Kelly and Bill if you feel like you had adequate time to explore those options. Um, you, what do you mean? The, well, I mean, um, you know, the, 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 the finance committee meeting that I sat in on, you were going to kind of look at, you know, a grant writer or bringing somebody in as a consultant. And, um, you know, I didn't really hear that side of it. You know, have you had adequate time to explore that, that you think that this is the best solution? Uh, well, Kelly and I, um, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead no, go ahead. So, so, you know, we had the, we, we met with Ken Geis and we had a, a fairly lengthy discussion with him, especially regarding the industrial, you know, park or district in mm -hmm. the village. Um, but I mean, you know, he was basically outlining plans that would, you know, those are years in the making, mm -hmm. you, you know, kind of a thing. So, yeah. I mean, and that's the only area that we talk about. So, so no, that was not fully explored. And then I forget who it was. I think it might've been the chief. I mean, he was telling us about some gal, I think she works for Amberley Village that you know, right. runs down and explores grants. Well, no, we have, we've had no contact with her yet. I thought you did too. No, we, we were, no, I mean, did you talk to her, Kelly? I, no, I didn't. No, talk. I didn't. I seemed to be having some difficulty getting her name and contact information. But, but again, the, the point was, is we're trying to find a way to solve all these problems. Sure. Not, not just individual pieces. And, and if I'm not mistaken, Amberly has an administrator and they hire yep. the grant writer uh, right. you know, to, to go out and chase grants. Right. Yep. Yep. So, so again, we, I don't think you guys found anybody who can do all these things to solve yeah. all these different issues, the things that are not getting done today. Well, and, and listen, I, I, I think you know, maybe Joe just made the, the ultimate point there. All we're really discussing here tonight is basically is to start the process of yes. looking for some some individual. We're not hiring anybody tonight. Right. We're seeing if they're out there. We're seeing if they're out there. Anybody else? Well, I just want to reiterate that when, you know, we're, we're, we've got a progression of cutting services right now, you know, um, we're cutting the building department. That's a service. You know, we're, um, we, you know, we've, we've changed our model with our trash and, you know, basically people are taking that to the curve. You know, we made that decision unilaterally. I agree with the decision. You know, the first thing that was put out about the fire department was 
basically a cut in service. And I understand that that's you know, being looked at differently now. But again, I would just say that I feel very strongly that again, a more comprehensive look needs to be taken. And if part of that recommendation becomes, we need a village administrator. I'm, I'm not saying we don't need that, those, those abilities. I'm just saying, I'd like to approach it from a more holistic, comprehensive level. So well, that's I, my I two cents. I have a report from 1976 that was made to the mayor and to the council by village residents recommending that they start to look at having the village administrator as far back as 1976. And Joe, if I recall right, you said that the, the study that was done, NTF paid, for a NTF paid for a study that was done to say, you know, how with looking at the 20, or 2021 or whatever. And I believe they also recommended that we also have a village administrator as part of that. I don't study. believe that's the position of MPF now. Pardon me, I'm sorry? I don't believe that that is the, the uh, position of MPF now. Well, it was, it was, that, that, that was written. It was done by an objective third party. So, yeah, but a couple of years ago. So, it was. Yeah. But I'm just saying, this is, a, this is a theme that's come up. There have been studies done. They've all recommended going to the village administrator. Again, we're starting, all this is saying is let's start the search. Any other comments? No. On roll call, Mr. Bartlett. Hi. Mrs. Graves. You're on mute. Yeah, Marcy. Or I mean, Avia. Sorry, guys. I, I had a, a thing. Just, can you just repeat again? Are we voting on this? We're voting on this, right? Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Robin, I... the word to you. <laughs> that, that was an I. I guess it was an I. I Dr. Yes. Lewis. Nay. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Mrs. Rankin? Aye. Mr. Stelzer? Aye. All right, that report will be. Yeah, you know, again, we're looking. All we're doing is, you know, gathering information and whether that's the right decision to go. All right, Tony, the, the uh, next. Uh... Yes, the next report from uh, Rob regarding the Marymount Healthcare Plan. The Finance Committee met on Friday, April 16th, 2021. One at two o'clock p.m. via video conference to discuss the health care plan for full-time Marymount employees. Present at the meeting were finance committee members Rob Bartlett, Kelly Rankin, and Joe Seltzer, and Mayor Bill Brown. Marymount currently participates in the Center for Local Government Benefits Plan. This is a consortium of municipalities that pools their money to self-fund health care and dental care insurance. Haran administers the plan and provided us with data on what other communities are offering their employees attaches a spreadsheet that includes Marymount's current plan and the plans of some of the communities that we have benchmarked with on salaries. In comparing the percent of the healthcare premium that Marymount employees are being asked to contribute relative to the benchmark communities, most are in line. The committee discussed that the 10% contribution rate for the Platinum A plan was a little on the low end. However, last year was the first year that we asked employees to start to pay a percent of the premium so the committee recommends leaving the employee percent of the healthcare premium unchanged for this year. It was also noted that making three different options available for employees to choose from had worked well, as each of the three plans had been chosen by at least two employees. As such, the committee is recommending no changes be made to the plan offering. Uh, Net, after reviewing the most recent benchmarking data, the Finance Committee is recommending no changes to the Village Healthcare Plan this year. The Center for Local Government will be meeting later this month to determine how much the premiums will be increasing effective August of 2021. Once we have that data, we will share that with council and the fiscal officer for budgeting planning purposes. Respectively submitted, signed by Rob Bartlett, Chairman, Kelly Rankin, and Joe Seltzer. All right, you've heard the report. I need a motion and a second to accept. So moved. Second, Rob's got the second. All right, any discussion on this? Uh, there's, Rob's provided a nice uh, graph here of comparison. No discussion, we all good? Um. All right, hearing none on roll call, Mr. Bartlett. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Mrs. Rankin. Aye. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Stelzer. Aye. Okay, Tony. 
All right, also from uh, Finance Committee regarding building department organization structure. The Finance Committee met on Friday, April 16th, 2021 at 2 o'clock p.m. Uh, via video to discuss a potential new organization structure for the building department. Present at the meeting were Finance Committee members Rob Bartlett, Kelly Rankin, and Joe Seltzer, and Mayor Bill Brown. The Finance Committee has already presented to Council a recommendation to eliminate the salaried building administrator role and move to an hourly paid zoning officer role similar to Terrace Park and Fairfax. Attached is a list of the responsibilities of the zoning officer. The Finance Committee is recommending that we pay the zoning officer $20 per hour, consistent with Fairfax. Uh, the Terrace Park zoning officer is a resident who is doing it for free. The role would be appointed by the mayor with the approval of council. To be clear, the responsibilities of the zoning officer uh, could continue to evolve. With the help of Eileen Beatty, who has laid out the responsibilities of the zoning officer, we have identified that there is a fair amount of work that is more clerical in nature that could be done by someone who would not need to be paid $20 per hour. However, with Don Key's retirement and the startup of XPEX for all the technical aspects, we need to get this zoning officer rule up and running. The Finance Committee will address these additional opportunities later this year. The Finance Committee would also like to make, an, make one addition to the responsibilities of XPEX. We believe XPEX should also do all inspections of rental units as recommended previously by Ms. Beatty. In terms of who would pay for the inspection, if it is part of a rental unit turning over, then the landlord would pay. If it is requested by a renter and the unit is found not to be in compliance, then the landlord would pay. And if the inspection is requested by the renter and the unit is found to be in compliance, then the renter would pay the fee. If council agrees to this recommendation, rental inspection will be added to the list of expects responsibilities and village solicitor will draw up the necessary legislation to create a zoning officer. Respectively submitted and signed by Rob Bartlett, Chairman Kelly Rankin and Joe Seltzer. All right, you've heard the report and you need a motion and a second to accept. So moved. Rob's, Rob had the second. All right, any discussion? Oh, I have a question. Surprise, surprise. Hmm. Um, there has been some discussion floating around and, you, and Rob, you even sent an email about the hours that the zoning officer would be working. Yeah, we have, we have not set any specific hours. So, well, but the email that you sent to Paul May said 40 to 50 hours. No, it, it, it said, what it said was, it said, it said that we have $40,000 $40, in the budget. That is Don's, well, I shouldn't, I'm sorry about that. That is the previous salary that we have in the budget right now. So $20 an hour, 40 hours a week, 50 weeks a year, adds up to $40,000. So we have the budget right now to cover up to 40 hours a week. Now, ideally, we're hoping that, that the work can be done in less, but we just, the budget is already in there for up to that much work. But really? we're, not, we're, not set, we're not setting a limit. We're not saying you can only work so many hours or anything else like that. We're just saying this is the amount of budget that's been set aside, you know, that's, that's already in the budget for that role. And I think as we had talked about, we're, we're still sort of in the process of defining the role. And that, that's part of the issue as to why, you know, I know there was a little confusion about this hour thing. Um, but I think, you know, as we go forward and the, the role, the definition or, or as we define the role becomes more clear, we'll have a better grasp on how many hours it's gonna be. Well, I think it's very important that we provide continuity for our residents. Mm -hmm. And we have need someone who is up to speed, knows Marymount, knows our historic district, um, especially given the fact that we are going to this XPEX model that you know, will have a very steep learning curve. We need somebody who is going to be able to help them. Exactly. And, you know, maintain that um, continuity. Uh, you know, I, if you just feel from a historical perspective and from a service perspective to our residents, that is absolutely essential. Eileen, yeah. did you have any comments uh, on the outline that sort of, you know, somewhat briefly outlines the roles and duties of the zoning officer? Um, no, I wrote it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Eileen, for doing that. Thank you for taking yeah. the time to lay all those things out. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank so, you. You want to make any comments on it? Then I know you wrote it. <laughs> uh, it's too much work for twenty hours. <laughs> but, uh, that's all. <laughs> but I don't know if it needs forty. 
Um, so well, it, again, again, but, you know, we really don't know where the hours are going to fall on this, and it's it's going to be a learning curve for all of us as we go forward. Yeah, but, yeah. and as you talked about, again, there, there might be some clerical things that can be done at a lower cost by somebody else. We, yeah. we need to explore that, but we need to also get this roll up and running so that we can have that going while expats is going. Yeah. Do you think for, like one thing that we would you know do? Um, in the private sector would just be to say, like, if you, if you, depending upon the week, if there's a lot of work going on, you know, if you have to work more than 40, just getting approval to work more than that. Um, I mean, that could be something to think about as well. Yeah. yeah. I, I do have a question, Rob, what you just said about getting it up and running and that being important. I don't know what you mean by that. Well, I, creating the position, officially creating the position. Got it. Okay. So it doesn't exist yet. And so that's where we need Ed to draw up the legislation to create the role and things like that. Okay. Hey, hey, Rob, what are we going to do in that regard then? As you and I talked previously, I'll make it a very generic uh, ordinance, just like uh, Fairfax. And then for our 31.077, you want me to kind of hold in abeyance doing anything with that right now? Yes, please. Because yeah. if you look, if you look at that code section, it does talk about the rights, responsibilities of the building administrator and the authority right. that that position has. So you just want me to don't touch that right now. Just just do the generic zoning officer. Yeah, because because in that section thirty one point zero seven seven, it also says in there that um, it says the building commissioner or uh, designate. So it, I think it gives us that flexibility to say. You know, just because the person doesn't have the title of building commissioner, they can still do that, some of the activities that are in there. So, okay. But I'll touch, I'll touch base with you as we once we get through this process of seeing if everyone's okay with the report. All right, that's fine. Thank you. All right. Any other comments? We're good. All right. On roll call, Mr. Bartlett. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Mrs. Rankin. Aye. Mr. Stelzer. Aye. All right, we'll pass that report. All right, Tony, I think there's one more. Yep, one more uh, regarding the school resource officer to full-time role. The Finance Committee met on Friday, April 16th, 2021 at two o'clock p.m. via video to discuss a request by Chief Hines to make the school resource officer a full-time employee role. Present at the meeting were Finance Committee members, Rob Bartlett, Kelly Rankin, and Joe Stelzer, Mayor Bill Brown, and Police Chief Rick Hines. Chief Hines shared with the committee that the school resource officer, the SRO role is currently considered a part-time role and as such cannot participate in the village's health care plan. SRO Romano has received an offer to work that would allow him to participate in their- Yeah, put it in the freezer. Avi, uh, you need to go on mute. You need to mute while you're yelling at the kids. <laughs> All right, SRO Romano has received, okay. Uh, however, he would prefer to continue to stay at his his current role as SRO, if it were possible for him to have access to the village's health care plan. SRO Romano has even volunteered to reduce his hourly pay by $4 an hour in order to offset some of the cost of him joining our health care plan. Chief Hines has reached out to Lance Hollander from the Marymount School District because the Marymount School District, District currently covers 80% of the cost of the SRO. Mr. Hollander said they would very much like to keep SRO Romano as well to the point they would be willing to pay $8,000 a year more to help cover the healthcare costs. The added benefit of keeping SRO Romano is he also fills in uh, on our police department covering the summer when many of the officers take vacations. Paying SRO Romano's lower rate versus having to pay one of the current officers overtime to fill in for vac vacations saves the village money as well. Assuming that SRO Romano choose our gold A plan, which is uh, the middle of the three plans, and after taking into account the reduction of pay of $4 per hour and the additional $8,000 payment by the Marymount School District, the net cost increase for the village is roughly $2,000 per year. So the cost sharing between the village and the school district is 20%, 80% consistent with the overall agreement. The Finance Committee recommends that Council approve making the school resource officer role a full-time role versus a part-time role, which requires a change in the village salary ordinance Furthermore, because the SR, because SRO Romano currently has an offer to work elsewhere, the committee is recommending this change be made on an emergency basis so we can keep SRO Romano in our organization. Respectively submitted by Rob Barlett, Chairman, Kelly Rankin, and Joe Selzer. All right, you've heard the report and need a motion to second to accept. So moved. 
Second. All right. Any discussion on this? No, no discussion. We all good. It's fairly straightforward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we definitely want to keep Officer Romano. He's he's a good guy, and this is, I think, a good compromise all the way around. All right, Mr. Bartlett. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Mrs. Rankin. Aye. Mr. Stelzer. Aye. All right. Uh, let's see. We're going to move on to miscellaneous here. I want to clear one thing up, though, before we move off of the committee reports. The remarks that I made regarding the uh, village administrator and wanting to have a greater emphasis on a financial person is in no way reflective of Tony and the work that he does here. And I want to make it clear that certainly I am not suggesting that this person would somehow replace Tony and he wouldn't be our fiscal officer anymore. I just want to be clear about that. Well, Bill, thank you. But I, um, <laughs> what I do is more like compliance driven. You know, I do the budget and report for the state and county and levies and whatnot. So, but so I think, yeah, something more analytical would be good for the village. Somebody who can. And, and, and what I've heard is that there's actually a set of duties that the fiscal officer has to perform that's separate from the administrator. So it's not like, you know, okay. uh, okay. It's, it's an either or situation. Right, right. I'm just saying Tony's doing a great job and no one's talking about him going away. I, I just wanted to be clear about that. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Um, that was the last one, right, Tony? Yes, that was the last one. All right. Moving on to uh, miscellaneous then. Um, village offices will be closed in observation of Memorial Day, May the 31st. Um, I, I want to add one here that's not listed here, uh, and Joe, if you want to make a quick comment about this, that's fine, but the Murray Avenue Trail groundbreaking is also going to be on May the 30th, that's Friday. April, April. Or April, April, I'm sorry, April, April, April the 30th, 4 p.m. over at the Murray Trail. Um, going to be some festivities over there. We're going to, you know, shovel some dirt and so on and so forth. It's going to be a great send-off, a great kickoff. Yeah, as soon as I get off this meeting, I'll be sending invites out to everybody. I'm, I'm accumulating the uh, list to send everybody out. But it'll be Friday, April 30th, 4 p.m., corner of uh, Murray and Plainville. Uh, we're going to be uh, serving refreshments, and, uh, you know, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, well, a little bit of groundbreaking, a little bit of celebration, and maybe a little bit of a happy hour connected to it. So, so, so if everybody can make it Friday at 4, uh, we'll see everybody then. Sounds like a fun event. All right, uh, painting on the lamppost in Marymount. Um, as you hopefully, have, most of you are aware, they're almost finished with that job and they are looking fantastic. They do. And we will be exploring. There were 22 or three, I believe, lampposts total that he's doing now. And of course, we've got you know, like 400 plus you know, additional posts within the village. We've used this guy before. He did painting for us at the tennis courts. The process that he uses is a, um, a very good process, a longer lasting process. And I do believe it's got a, what is it, John? Has it got a two year or three year warranty that comes with it? Yes. Yeah. So it's a dialect paint instead of the regular paint. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The ones at the tennis court lasted over 15 years. So yeah. Yeah. It, it's, and man, they're looking, it, it's, it looks so good down there to finally get the square um, sort of cleaned up in that regard. Uh, all right, audit, audit committee recommendations. We need uh, three. Are we, doing... so are, are we looking, are we going to get close for potentially doing other parts of the village also? Or? Yeah. We, yes. Well, yeah, yeah, so that's what we talked about, maybe putting that in public works to analyze that. Uh, and how much is the work, work costing to do the square? 13.8. 13.8. Like I think was the lowest we had. Yeah. So I'm sorry, but that wasn't built into a budget anywhere. And so, yeah, no, it wasn't. It was not, it was never built into a budget. But this is where, again, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to be a broken record, but I think we need to have a consistent process here for doing this stuff. So we spent 13,000, but it wasn't in a budget. But I think we said we're going to try and use the state, the state highway fund. Yeah. Because there's about 18,000 in there right now still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a perfect because it can only that money can only be used for something used, on Worcester Pike. Yeah, and that's a perfect uh, thing to use it on. Right, right. Yeah. But it just it feels like we feel like this should have gone to public works first since. Well, was this not approved back in 2019 with Mayor Dan? 
when we were going out for the bids? I, I don't recall that. I mean, I was here in 2019. I don't recall us getting any approval for bids. I mean, because that's why I thought he was going to do it in 2020, but with COVID, he had pushed it off. It wasn't. So that's why I went and got. I had him re-give me a written bid again. I think it was back in September, just to verify we're still the same. But I thought we were trying to get it all done for, um, in case we had Memorial Day and the Flying Pig again this year. Yeah, p p part of this was essentially we didn't know whether or not we were going to have the parade. We didn't know whether we were going to have the race, and we were trying to. Yeah, we, we did try to step this up. Um, but I thought Mayor I thought we Mayor Dan had that already approved before he left. We just didn't do it then because of all that. Because he because he originally had it with regular paint, having the poles being painted with those companies. Maybe I misunderstood. I thought it was already approved. That's why I went and told the guy, just give me the written. We'll try to get it done first thing this year. Yeah. yeah. Are you talking about striping or painting poles? Sorry. Painting, oh. Painting the uh, light poles at the, town, at the town square. See, I don't remember that. I do remember we talked about striping right before it to make it look nicer. Um, I can't remember. There was a discussion. Well, I remember at one point in time about the poles, and I remember because I was like, I was all about like, yeah, let's get it nice, let's get it nice. But I don't think, I don't think everybody else was on the same page with me at the time. <laughs> well, let, let, let's do it this way. Somebody go back and look at the record to see if it was approved or not. I mean, the cats, you know, the horses out yeah. of the barn because yeah. we've hired them. So, so the thirteen eight, we're going to have to, to spend no, no, no matter what at this point, whether it was approved or not. Let's just get back, go back and look at that detail, and then we can take a look at do we have money for any more? Yeah. Because I think the the answer is is I would I would agree with Rob that it wasn't built into the twenty twenty one budget. Because we weren't aware that this may have been approved in the past. I thought we talked about it permanent improvement, no? no. As well. I don't I'll know. look I'll look up my notes, see what we got. So so John, is there anything else like this that was approved in the past that you know uh, is still kind of pending, you know, that might hit the twenty twenty one spend? Not not a big project that I know of. I know this we started painting these poles back in 07. Mm -hmm. And and each year they keep saying they want to change it and do something different. Um, I know I know meeting with Dan and he had two other people that he he knew that could paint the poles. And I said the problem we had with that was because we had one type of paint we got from Sherwin Williams for the metal poles. And then somebody found out they could get it cheaper through Howard Supply at the time through Porter Paint, the same type of paint, but it was cheaper. So they went that route and that and next thing you know, it all started peeling. And they said it was because the poles were too hot and different temperatures and stuff. And we hired the high school kids the one year, and that's why half the poles were only painted halfway up. Um, and then when they dipped their brush in the turpentine, they never cleaned out the brush. And, and you're laughing, Joe, out the but paint. That, that really happened. It okay. happened. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so, we've been so let, we, 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 we say, we've been home. kicking this can down the road for, since 2007. Right. I but, said, let, 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 needless to say, but, we got some homework before the next meeting. Yeah. Let's figure out what was approved in the past and figure out what, what, what more we do. And then you know, yeah. we can go from there. But yeah. I'll, I'll look it up. Yeah, okay. the, the reason the reason I was just bringing it up, I, yeah, it, it, what's done is done. But I, I was hoping that we could try and get a bid to say, what would you do if you, what if you just did the square, and then what would the cost be if we did the square plus some other places to try and get a better scale price? You know. Yes. Right. So when we met with this guy, that was one of the things we brought up that we wanted to do the twenty five poles in the area so everybody could see it. And then we said, you know, based on your price and everything that we're doing, we know you did good at the, at the tennis courts. We want to make sure these poles look good. And then down the road, we want to do X amount of poles per year, right. say five or 10 years down the road. So if you give us a good bid, you know, we can kind of look at what, you're, you, what you do, what your company is doing, seeing how it compared. So I think what this tennis court was, what, over 20 years? It was Jack when Jack Schreckenhofer was here. Um, so, you know, he knew going in, that he's got to be competitive and do a nice job so that he can look at doing the rest of it. Because Dan and I talked about, you know, doing so many per year, you know, in the high visible areas first and then go around after that. So, so I think I'll, it's I'll, worth I'll look it up and see. It was towards, I know it was in 19. It was before Dan left. Um, I'll look it up. I'll, I'll see what I can find out. Okay. Uh, so are we putting an aspect of this in Kelly's committee? Well, I think we should look at, you know, like John just said, what we're going to do for the rest of the polls, come up with a plan, 
I'd like to see like how bad the polls are, kind of rate how the polls are, and then come up with a plan, you know, budget how many we can do in a given year, see if we can get a good price based on a quantity. You can just basically start that conversation to get the rest of them taken care of. Okay. It's, it's sort of like what Chris does with the streets, right? He right, the exactly. Streets and prioritizes yep. and stuff like that, which I think yep. is great to tell. I think that would make sense. Yeah. Yeah, because we can't possibly paint them all in one year. Right. Yeah. So it's going to be a rotational kind yeah, of. Yeah, exactly. So we rate them like Rob yeah. said, like Chris does with the streets. Yeah. Okay. So we're putting that in your committee. Yes, please. All right. All right. Moving on to the audit committee recommendation. We need three nominations. So, so are we naming names here tonight? Well, so I think what I think we're going to do is we I think we got to talk about it, right? And say, who do we think? And then we ought to prioritize and sort of. Talk, have somebody go contact the ones we agreed to and not over ask and ask four people and then say, I'll say yes, and we all we only need three, you know. So I think the first step is for us to just talk about brainstorm who do you think might be good? Um, and again, just to remind people the responsibilities are, you know, we have the audit that's coming up so that they would go through the audit and provide their perspective. This is there's something that's already in the code book and we just updated it in the past year. Mm -hmm. And so it's not potentially not in the most recent code book because we haven't recodified yet. Sure. But um, we decided to go ahead and keep this committee. And they also then we added into that to say just looking at our overall financials from a village standpoint, you know, any trend comments or things like that. So it's trying to involve more of the residents into this process and, and get their input. So we're trying to find people who might have a good kind of background for that kind of stuff. All right. And so based on that, one of the people I thought might be a good person to approach. I haven't done anything yet. Would be Stan Bale. No, that was my. I, that was my pick. Oh, that was mine. That was my pick. No, that was mine. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you know, since he was previously the treasurer, and um, you know, he, I think he has some good familiarity with all this kind of stuff. So, yeah. but I have not talked to him yet. He's my old neighbor. He's my current neighbor. Not quite. Not. Yeah. Huh. Closer than. So, Anything else? I have one. So I spoke with her already. Um, Lynn Tumler lives over on Easter in Indian View. Um, and she is in finance. And I I did copy and send her the code um, regarding the or the duties of the position anyway. And so she said that she was interested. Oh good. Hey, hey Maggie, spell that last name, would you please? It's T U M M L E R. Okay. So I have her resume too, because she was interested and I said, well, why don't you just send it to me? Cause I'm not sure how exactly we're doing this, but in case everyone would like to vet, you know, the people. So I, I have it, if you're interested, we can pass it around. I'm sure she's fine with that. So. Great. Right. Thank right. you. Do you want um, me to send it out or do you want me to just send it to one person who's going to curate all this or what do you want me to do? Well, I mean, it doesn't hurt if we all have it. No, I mean, yeah, but are we going to get, like, are we giving everything to Bill and then Bill's sending all of the oh. ones around or what in one That's email? Good, good question. Organize. Bill. Well, I think you should send it to everybody first, then look at it. You can come to me. Okay. I mean, I'll contact these people once we kind of narrow it down. Okay. I'll send it to everyone. Have anything to narrow down. We need, we need one more at least. I haven't come up with anybody yet, but that's not to say I won't continue trying. All right. Well, Another person who might be good, Bill, you know, I talked to is um, Bill Hercamp. Oh, yeah, Bill Hercamp. Yeah. Might be another good person yeah. to try. Yeah, he's good. Mm -hmm. Hercamp. Rob, have you, Rob, have you talked to Bill yet? No, I've not. Again, I, I've not talked to anybody because I, I okay. wanted to sure that we all had a lot. Yeah. I have not talked to Bill yet. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. I mean, Bill, I think Bill would be good. Mm -hmm. And he'll, he'll, yeah, he'll be back soon. Yeah, he travels a lot. But he's here in the summer. Yeah. The winter is in Florida, the summer is here. So this would be okay. a good time for him to do this. Okay. Anybody else got anything? I mean, I can probably search out some more people if we need okay. more. I'm, I'm not sure we need them all right here tonight. I mean, I okay. guess. We're, right. We're, we're, we're right. What is a deadline by which we need to do this? Or was I not paying attention? Uh, no. Yeah. By, well, like, you know, by tomorrow morning. No. So the, the audit is completed by... Joni and Tony, when's it normally done? Finish by. Uh, they, they should do their field work in May and then we get a report uh, probably June, July. Okay. okay. So we need the committee done by the end of May, I guess? 
Yeah. And yeah. then do we just appoint or do we have readings? Like how long do we, what's the lead time? Cause it's April, what, third, 20th? I'm, I'm, Ed, I'm assuming there would be a resolution to assign these people to this committee. Uh, you're on mute, Ed. I'm sorry, what'd you say? I said, I'm assuming these people who would be assigned to this audit committee, the audit committee is in our legislation already. I'm assuming that we require a resolution then. That is correct, yes. So three readings, one resolution, you know, resolution, three readings, that type of right. thing. Right, that is correct. Do you have the three names? Well, we have three names so far, yes. But would they haven't all agreed to do it. So I guess. Yeah, we, so, we and Bill, Bill are you, do you want to contact the yeah. other person? Yeah, I'll contact him. Okay. So all Bill right. will take the lead on this. And then if, if this doesn't work, we come back and we can see, you know, if, if we still need one or two or three more people, we can get some more suggestions. Yeah. If, if you could let us know as you hear back from them so we start to know if we have to start rounding up more names. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That'd be great. Yeah. All right, uh, decision on hiring consultant for assessing fire department opportunities. So again, I, you know, I've sent to you guys the proposals from Kramer and McGrath. Um, Kramer is the person who is here locally and in, in his, his office is in Blue Ash. Um, the, the proposal he provided was $7,400. McGrath is based out of Illinois. Is $18,250. I've given you guys the name of a third one, but we agreed not to ask for an official proposal because they said their, their studies are in the $33,000 to $36,000 range. So it's down to two people. It's, it's Kramer, his local, $7,400, McGrath, Illinois, $18,250. And again, you guys, I sent out the proposals there in the previous um, council packets. Yep. If we decide that it's going to be Kramer, then I'm assuming we will bring him back in here for a sort of a final interview talk to discuss aspects of more specifically what it is. Right. Well, and I like I like what Matt said about I think we need to give him. I think we got to give him. You know, again, there's there's um, Tim Feitner and Terry Timmer. Timmers are, are developing a proposal that they think we should follow. So. Um, I'd like to have Kramer assess that, but I also, I like Matt's point about, let's also just like Kramer use his experience mm -hmm. to give us other examples or suggestions. And Bill, I think you also had another point there. I think we should say, well, if we don't do anything, what, what might we be able to do? So, you know, assess what Tim and Terry have given, assess what if we did nothing, and then give us a free range. Tell us whatever you think might be appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, we want to give him a, a long leash. Yeah. Yeah. And that would include, you know, talking to this resident committee, you know, and getting, you know, feedback and input from that group. So uh, we're we just going to have a show of hands on this. Roll call. Huh? Roll call. So wait, let's do we Are we moving? So um, does anyone, let's have a discussion. Does anyone have any strong feelings about one or the other? One or the other being McGrath or Kramer? Correct. Well, just based on, I think Kramer makes more sense from a location and a and a financial viability standpoint. Yeah, I I, I agree. I like the fact that he's because he would understand how Hamilton County works in terms of mutual aid and all those other kind of things. I mean, he he actually was a member of the Cincinnati Fire Department, so I think it would be nice to have some of that local understanding of how things work here specifically, and the price is better too as well. So. Yes. Yeah. So I would I would agree with you, Kelly. Has anybody else got any other thoughts? So I, I would move then that we um, vote to talk with Kramer and, and follow up on the proposal there. And like Bill said, you know, we can meet with him and, and Bill and I can meet with him like we did before and then get things sort of kicked off with him. Any seconds? Do we need a we need okay, I'll second. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. <laughs> Stay awake down there. <laughs> you just, it's just, you sounded mumbled. Like I couldn't. <laughs> Sorry. Dr. Lewis. 
Um, I want to, I'm voting no, and I'm going to qualify that, that I agree with Matthew that we need to do this kind of comprehensive study. I just think it needs to be on a wider scope and um, not just limited to the fire department. We need to look at the village as a whole. Okay. All right. Ms. Palazzolo? Aye. Mrs. Rankin? Aye. Uh, Mr. Stelzer? Aye. All right. So Rob and I will recontact Mr. Kramer and enter into another discussion. Yep, and then just let them go. We stay out of it. Yeah, exactly. Yep, we stay out of it. Yeah. All right, forming a resident committee to help uh, in assessing any fire department opportunities. Um, obviously, this is something that I called for that I strongly, uh, you know, in, in favor of doing, obviously. Yep. Um, I'm not really sure here, though. What is this? Well, we, we creating a, a charter and well, a we need, group. We need to define the scope, right? right? That's the first thing. You don't give names until you know what the role is. So you need to say what what role is this group going to play? Because, see, like I didn't realize you were thinking this group would also provide input into the consultant. I thought it was more like assessing what the consultant did. But I, I'm not against that. I just so what is the scope of the work that we're going to ask this committee to do? We need to be clear about that. That'll help us understand who might be the best people to do that. Yeah, well, I mean, I would assume we're going to, this group would be, you know, analyzing and assessing, you know, the various proposals that have been put, put forth. I mean, starting with Feitner, Mr. Timmers, um, you know, you and Mr. Um, you know, Lemon. Oh, I, I, I am, I'm fine with this. Well, should, should you have one? Yeah. They can assess. So that. they assess all the proposals. Mm -hmm. like, all the proposals. Agree. Yeah. But you just said something earlier about do you want them to provide input to the to the um, to the Kramer? Well, what I what, what I'm suggesting is that, that obviously they would have an interaction with Mr. Kramer. Okay. Uh, you know, they would sit down and I, I would assume discuss you know various aspects of the proposals or and also as you noted thing just discuss basically the basic aspect of the fire department. I mean, you know. You know, the, the, I don't like calling it the do nothing approach. I mean, it's essentially maintaining the existing fire department model as we have it, but possibly making, you know, if, does it need to be tweaked? Does it need to be worked? I mean, looking, you know, looking at that as an option. Well, again, we're, we're going to ask Kramer to specifically do yeah, that. Yeah, and Kramer will be doing the same thing. So, but to help me understand this, this charter group, this group would obviously, again, analyze and assess the proposals. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to understand, do you want them to be involved in the front end? Like, so, because- I don't want know, them making proposals if that's what you're asking. Okay, so, okay, that's good. But we should, you know, yeah. but do you want them to, so, because Kramer goes and meets with all these different stakeholders. Do you want that to be one of the stakeholder groups that he talks to as his input? Yeah. Was, okay, yeah, got yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Any other specific things you'd want to get for the expectations of this group? Anyone else? You know, you all free or to the rest of you yeah, can join no, in I'm here. Yeah, I was thinking, I mean, it's, um, I guess I wouldn't mind thinking about it for a day or two. Okay, it's, well, again, so, it's a process, right? This yeah. is just like we do with the swim, right. task, the swim pool task force. We sit there and say, and if, you, if you're okay with it, I'm happy to take a first cut at a charter, send it, you know, and then we can discuss it at the next council meeting and see if that makes sense, make modifications to it. I don't, you know, that's fine. And then hopefully we align to a charter. Once you have a charter aligned to, then you can start to say, okay, who makes sense to have on this committee? Now we know exactly what we're going to ask this committee to do. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I want to think about this a little bit more myself. So just just email email it to me, and again, mm -hmm. I'll put it together, and I'll I'll have something for us to look at at the next council meeting. Mm -hmm. So people, and that that won't be the you know obviously we'll just work through it that one too. Yeah. We'll make changes then. So nothing is written in stone. That's for sure. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Good. So again, it was a process. <laughs> Once we've got the charter, then we can talk to potential people to do the be, be members of it. And Bill, I think you were, you also mentioned you thought it was like because part of the charter is size of the size of the committee. And I think we talked about five mm -hmm. roughly is what you're thinking. Yeah, approximately, yes. yeah. Uh -huh. 
I mean, I think it would be one of those things the mayor picks two, the council picks two, and we'll try to mutually agree on the fifth, something like something like that. Well, I mean, so far we've done the, the pool task force, the audit committee has just been a group session. And I think we've come up with a good group, good groups of people so far. Yeah. And so it'd be, I think it would be nice if we could try that. And if we can't come to an agreement, then we go ahead and fall back to something like that. But I mean, let's, it's worked so far. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can, if we all mutually agree on the picks, then yeah. 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 Okay. And again, this, this committee, once once whatever decision comes out, then the group is done. That's it's just it's a short committee, it's not an ongoing committee. Right. This is just to help us help us in assessing what's going on and what the proposals are to come forward and give us their thoughts on what they think would be the best way to do. And then after the decision is made, the, the committee is disbanded. Okay. Okay. This is an evolving process. I'm not necessarily agreeing with that or disagreeing with it at the moment. Okay. All right. All right. Well, we, we're good on that. Yep. At least for starters, anywhere, anyway. For, start, for starters. For starters. For starters. All right, Tony. Let's get started on resolutions. Getting late. All right, the yes, first one, is. resolution declaring the necessity of levying a tax in excess of the 10 mil limitation for permanent improvements and requesting the county auditor to certify matters in connection therewith. All right, that's the third reading. Um, I need a motion and a second to accept. So moved. Second. Second. Rob's got the second. Roll call, Mr. Bartlett. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Paolo Zolo. Aye. Mrs. Rankin. Aye. Mr. Stelzer. Aye. All right, that'll be accepted. Tony. Authorizing, sorry, authorizing purchase of Mayor's Court software from the Baldwin Group, Inc., BGI. All right, that's the second reading. Any discussion on this? No, I think we all know what this is. I think we're all good. Yep. All right, we'll have the third reading uh, next week. No, our next right, time. Next authorize the recodification of the Marymount Code of Ordinances. Okay, again, second reading. Any discussion? Nope. All right. Nope. All right. We'll have the third next reading. one, fixing a time for a public hearing on the 2022 budget. All right, that's the first reading. We'll have the second reading next time. Authorizing subscription to Lexapol software to assist police and fire departments. Again, first reading, we'll have the second reading next uh, next council. To accept the bid of Supremescapes for mulching required mulching required areas of the village. Again, first reading, we'll have the second reading next time. Resolution appointing members to the tree advisory board. Again, first reading, we'll have the second reading next uh, next council. All right, the ordinance, ordinance. There are two of those, okay. two of those. An ordinance amending number 0-32-98, establishing a restricted computer fund herein called Mayor's Court Computer Fund. Okay, that was the second reading. We'll have uh, any discussion. No? No. No? All right. Nope. Okay, we got the big one for last. All right, to amend ordinance 0-17-21 of the Marymount Code of Ordinances to increase payment for employees and to declare emergency. All right, you've had the first reading. I need a motion and a second to suspend the rules and allow for the second and third reading. So moved. Right, hearing a second. I'll second. All right, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. On roll call, Mr. Bartlett. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Mrs. Rankin. Aye. Mr. Stelzer. Aye. All right, maybe we have the second reading, please. Yes, to amend ordinance 0-17-21 of the Marymount Code of Ordinances to increase payment for employees and to declare emergency. All right, is there any discussion? I think Tony's already explained this, but is there any, anybody have any other questions? Nope. Nope, all right, maybe we have the third reading, please. To amend ordinance 0-17-21 of the Marymount Code of Ordinances to increase payment for employees and to declare emergency. All right, I need a motion and a second to adopt. So moved. Mr. Bartlett, oh, sorry, need a second. Second. second, Rob's got the second. Mr. Bartlett. 
Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Mrs. Rankin. Aye. Mr. Stelzer. Aye. All right, I need a motion and a second to evoke the emergency clause. So moved. Second. Rob's got the second. On roll call, Mr. Bartlett. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Mrs. Rankin. Aye. Mr. Stelzer. Aye. All right, that motion will be adopted. Any other business? I have one little one. Um, unless there's a really huge um, <laughs> coincidence. I think Kristen's name, our vice chair of the tree committee is spelled wrong in this ordinance and I didn't notice it, or sorry, in the resolution, I didn't notice it before. But I, is it Kristen Van Scoy? Because it's in here as Kristen Van Scott and I- It's Van, her, her Van, last name is Van Scoy. Yeah, yeah, it's S-C-O-T, so it needs to be changed to S-C-O-Y. Good, good catch. Thanks, Maggie. Unless there's a major coincidence, we have two Kristens with a van something. Mm -hmm. I doubt it. Mm. Good catch, good catch. One thing that came up this week is Eli said that um, paying a three and a half percent credit card fee is a, is a challenge with the software, the new software they're moving to. And so they want to move it to a flat fee. And so they want to put it in the finance committee. Okay. Okay. So we'll put in the finance committee the realignment of the credit card fee, the credit card charge. So there, there's core flat fee versus 3.5% for credit cards. Okay. Is that like if people pay us like at the village with a credit card? Is that what you mean? Oh, okay. Yeah. I just did it today. I was like, oh, I can pay for my garden plot. It was amazing. It cost me a dollar. I liked it. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, the, my only last business for you all is that we will next meeting, we will be meeting live here in the council chamber. And thank God we're going to be off this Zoom. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing you all. We will be wearing the masks. I will be. Um, having you know the distancing so that we can all spread out. I will limit the number of people that will let into the gallery at any one time. Um, I, I think it'll be fine. I'm it'll be fine. Yeah. Except we all have to wear pants. Bill, did you think that? <laughs> okay, can we end the meeting before she talks anymore? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're adjourned. Okay. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>